It's October 2nd, 2024, and my half acre vegetable farm has generated just over $70,000 in sales. By the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you five key ingredients that got me there and that you can use to grow a boatload of food in your backyard. I'm Zach Buckle. I own Farm Table West, which is this half acre vegetable farm that you see behind me. We've already hit $70,000 in sales, and our goal is to hit $100,000 in sales by the end of the year. So make sure you subscribe to see if we make it by December 31st. If you're interested in growing your own food like I grow food for other people, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I go over how to set up a really easy no dig garden in your backyard in four easy steps. First ingredient is crop selection. So I only grow really high yielding crops or really fast growing crops on this farm because we're growing on such a small amount of land. The only way for me to make the kind of money I'm talking about is to grow really high yielding crops in a small space or growing really fast growing crops in a small space because fast growing crops can mature quickly and be flipped to another crop. And then high yielding crops can grow over a longer period of time to give you a huge yield by the time they're mature, like these green onions. These green onions will produce about anywhere from two to 400 bunches on this one 50 foot bed. And I think I could bump it up a lot more. There's a lot of factors involved there, but the bottom line is it's a huge amount of food in a small space. We don't grow things like winter squash or melons here because those don't yield a lot in a small space. We grow high yielding crops or things that grow up a string vertically that yield even more in a small space. Things like tomatoes, cucumbers, stuff like that. And that's the same concept you could use in your garden. If you focus on the right crops, you can grow a truckload of food in your backyard. Some really good examples of this that we grow a ton of on the farm that you could grow in your garden are carrots, green onions, kale, beets, lettuce, cilantro, dill, radishes. Those are all either really fast growing or really high yielding. There's literally 30 or 40 other ones, but I don't have time to list them all here, but we focus on the right crops. And that way, that gives us the most amount of food in the smallest space possible. This same concept can grow you $1,200 worth of food in 250 square feet, which almost everybody has in their backyard. So crop selection is a key part of that success. The second ingredient is being religious about weekly planting dates. So every week, starting around February, we are seeding some kind of crop. Obviously in the spring, we're seeding a lot more variety of crops because we have to start all of our early tomatoes, cucumbers, stuff like that, that we only plant once or twice a year. But we still keep planting every week all the way up until literally this Friday, October 5th into the season. So we start from February and seed every week up until October 5th. That gives us a constant succession of crops with, and that doesn't just mean arugula and stuff like that. It's all sorts of different crops that can feed you. And that concept is something I don't see a lot of gardeners doing because you get burnt out by June or July when the weeds take over or it gets too hot or you just don't have enough time and you're not planting anymore. If you keep planting all the way up until October, you get that constant supply or at least double the amount of food that you're growing in the same space. So constant planting. And that's why I'm in my nursery here because this is the last of our seeded crops for the year. And some of these might still go in the ground even right now because we have greenhouses, but we constantly have plants ready to go because we're seeding in our nursery every single week or we're seeding in the ground directly every single week. So there's things you can see directly in the ground all the time like arugula, radishes, um, all sorts of baby greens. And later on in the season, you can do a lot more of that, but we're constantly planting. Every time we have a bare space in the ground throughout this entire half acre, something is going in the ground. And that's the key. So their ground is always has something growing in it. 
The third ingredient is experience. So an example of that on the farm is this very bok choy. I have planted bok choy in this exact spot at the exact date that we put it in the ground last year and it matured by November 3rd, which is the time plants stop growing in my climate. And so I know from experience that this bok choy will produce a crop and I don't get paid unless I produce a crop. So having a garden journal that I refer to all the time and that I record in all the time is one of the most valuable resources I have on the farm. And it can be for you in your garden too. So every time I seed, transplant, and harvest a crop, I record in that garden journal. And it tells me the days to maturity of that crop in that context. And the context matters a lot because the days to maturity are going to change depending on the time of year. And so your seed packets are going to tell you a certain days to maturity on a certain crop, but that only tells you the perfect conditions. In Wyoming, we almost never have the per perfect conditions, so I have to know what worked last year or years before. And I'm still learning this, but after four years, I'm pretty confident when I put a plant in the ground that it's going to produce a crop. And that matters for you too in your garden, because if you get good at this, you can grow two crops easily in the same spot. But having that journal to go back to will give you confidence in the years to come. So recording your planting, seeding, and harvest dates of all your crops is going to give you the experience you need to know that when you put your crop in the ground, it's going to give you food in X amount of time, most likely. And ultimately, that's what gardening is all about, is growing food. So... Keep a Garden Journal It is the most valuable resource I have on the farm. And I have a lot of other resources that cost a lot more money. But keeping a Garden Journal doesn't cost me any money. It just requires discipline and paying attention to the dates and yields and all that stuff. So try and incorporate that in your gardening next year. So if you want to grow food, your garden or farm needs to be as weed free as possible. As you can see here, there is almost no weeds. I can't really find any except for this one little dandelion right here. And that's a key ingredient to our success because we don't have to elbow our way through a bunch of weeds to get the food. And the way that we do that is we're religious about pulling perennial weeds, stuff like dandelions, purslane, bindweed, thistle, and then we cultivate uh, like crazy in the spring, which is a whole rabbit hole. I have a whole nother video on how we deal with weeds on the farm that I'll put above, and hopefully that'll get you started on your weed-free journey. But you want to grow food, not weeds. I know there's some different philosophies out there about diversity of plants and all that, but if you want to grow food, you got to keep the weeds out of the way. Because they will compete, especially if you want to grow this much on a small space. And the only way that we're able to do that on a half an acre to get $70,000 this so far and hopefully a hundred by the end of the year, because almost everything you see behind me is not ready yet. And it will be in a month and we'll be harvesting it all winter. But the only way we're going to get that result is if there's no weeds for them to compete, because there's very little time for this crop to grow. And if it had to compete with weeds, it wouldn't be mature. So keeping your garden and your farm as weed free as possible is going to just give you more food, which is ultimately what you want. So having a whole system for staying on top of weeds is something I briefly go over in the video above. And I go into a lot more depth in my gardening course, which is the link in the description and a little bit in the free garden starter guide at the link in the description also. But weeds are something you just don't want to deal with. And if you set your garden up right, you'll barely have to deal with them at all. But that's a whole nother story. Got to keep things weed free. There's just not that much benefit to having the diversity in plants that some people talk about, in my opinion. And it just causes a lot of stress 
if you're not on top of things going to seed, they're going to go to seed. You're going to have that weed problem there for years to come. So we've been dealing with this for years and that's how the farm looks so good. And the more you do that every year, it gets easier and easier to grow and less effort to pull the weeds. But you got to deplete that weed seed bank year after year to really get a nice blank canvas for you to grow what you want to grow. And discipline's a big part of that, but also setting up your garden in a no dig setting is a huge part of that also. The last key ingredient is two crops for the price of one. So almost every bed that you see here is a second crop. And the ones that are open like this have already had two crops in them. We have 120 day growing season here. And so to get two crops, we really have to hustle and make sure that we have plants ready to go on the ground or else we wouldn't have enough time to get two crops. So a lot of what you're seeing has been started in our nursery. So it's halfway grown by the time we put it in the ground. And that's part of that constant weekly seeding thing that I talked about earlier. But even the stuff that we didn't have seeding of, we have radishes that we direct seeded in the ground two, three weeks ago. And this cilantro and dill was all seeded in the paper pot in the nursery a couple weeks earlier. And so to get two crops in 120 days, we have to be religious about those starting dates. But also whenever there is an open spot, we have a plant to put in the ground that's already halfway grown or a seed like this arugula. This was just direct seeded. The arugula takes 21 days to grow. So you can easily get two crops in the same space, especially if you live in a climate that's warmer than ours and has longer than 120 day growing season. It just takes a little bit of discipline and practice on what works in your climate because cilantro is gonna grow at a different rate in your climate than mine. It's cold here, cilantro loves the cold, so it grows pretty much on time. In the heat, it's probably gonna slow down and it's probably gonna bolt a lot more. You know, if you're in, even in Colorado or something like that, you're probably gonna have a much different experience than me. So there's really no hard and fast rule with the days to maturity on this stuff. It all depends on your experience, but if you get two crops in the same space, that's literally double the amount of food. And as long as you feed the soil well in the spring with something like an inch of compost and even put in some alfalfa meal or soybean meal in between that spring crop and your fall crop, it's really easy to get two crops. And that's the only way we can make the kind of numbers I'm talking about on a half an acre in Wyoming. You know, this is in California. We have basically three and a half months to grow here. So in order to have year round production of food, we have to be really intense on those timings, but it's doable. You know, if we could do it here, you could do it in your climate, almost guaranteed. Maybe not Alaska or Siberia, that's a different story, but most likely you can do it. So if you're interested in turning your backyard into your own personal family farm for just you and your family, check out that free garden starter guide at the link in the description below. And if you have any questions about what I'm talking about, I'd love to hear them. Leave them in the comments below and let's start a conversation because I'd love to hear if you had experience with anything I'm talking about in your climate and what's worked and what hasn't worked. The more we share, the more we all learn. So I'd love to start that conversation in the comments below. I want to end this video with this. You don't need a half an acre of land to grow your own food. You just need this this is less than 200 square feet of growing space because we're only growing in these compost beds here and this is the end of the season so this looks pretty rough i didn't stay on top of the garden this much that much this year i've had a lot going on with my farm and you do need to pay attention a little bit more than i have to make it look a lot prettier than this because there's a lot of weeds and stuff but it's way less work than what I have to do on the farm to stay on top of the weeds here. And so in that free garden starter guide below, I go over exactly how I set up this garden in four steps. And this is your ticket to starting to grow your own food if you haven't ever done that before. Because once you set up your garden like this, 
you could spend an hour a month in there and you're going to have plenty of food and very little weeding to deal with. You spend almost no time in here if you don't want to. And you can spend as much time in here as you do want to. It's all up to your schedule. But this style of gardening is way easier than what I do on the farm and easier to stay on top of weeds and planting dates and all that other stuff. So all you have to focus on is seeding, planting, and harvesting, which is where all of your money or your food is going to be coming from with your garden. So hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next one.